want you to get an October surprise if you happen to have Obamacare. 736 here on News Radio 1140 WRBI. I mean, we've, we've shared these stories with you before, so it shouldn't come as a shock that uh, pretty much everybody's going to see double-digit increases when it's time to renew their policy. And, of course, based on the law, you have no choice, right? You have to pay the increases because you have to have the insurance or you have to pay the penalties. William Short joins us, health insurance expert and CEO at Ameriflex. I'm seeing some pretty amazing rates. I know Virginia's rates are likely to increase by 20%, William. Why do they have to go up that much? Well, there's a couple key things that are set to expire here at the end of the year that allow the insurance companies to be backstopped by the federal government. Uh, one measure was to help with the very sick individuals. That's set to expire, and the carriers are going to have to carry the full load on that, as well as the, if the carriers had mispriced their risk pool, the, care, the federal government was coming in behind them saying, hey, we'll supplement you, we'll take care of you from making mistakes. And the carriers are realizing these pools are very sick pools. They're older than I thought they would be because the young individuals and on the employer or parents' plans until they're 26. If a non-pre, you know, the pre-existing condition clause where they can get coverage, get care, and then not continue to pay for it. Um, and so people are jumping in and out just for care and then not continue to pay for it on. So you're left with pools of very sick older people that they had not uh, expected will on any consequence there. What are some of the worst increases that you've seen? I mentioned Virginia about 20%. What are you seeing in other places? So, I go, you know, I think it's over in Indiana. Uh, there's about a 44% increase there in wow. spending. Um, we've seen 50% increases. The CBO just came out in March that without the ACA, there would be over 6 million more people covered, and it would be in some places up to 50% cheaper, and that's without the ACA. So we have a law of 2,500 pages, where each page of law has nearly or more 100 pages of regulation. You're going to have a big collection of unintended consequences, and they're coming up to roost. Sure. And, and despite all this, these private insurance companies are having a tough time making the bucks, so much so that United Health here is pulling out of a couple states, aren't they? That's correct. United's pulling out of the largest insurer in the country. We have a lot of local blues plans that have been losing up three, four hundred million dollars on these individual exchanges, and they're having a real hard time justifying it. Um, and it's going to continue. And so, when you have a lack of competition in these exchanges or in these markets, and you leave one or two carriers to take the load on this very sick population, um, it's just going to continue to drive the problem and drive the increases. We're talking to William Short. He's a health insurance expert and CEO of Ameriflex here on News Radio 1140 WRVA. Uh, have you had a comparison at all, William, between Obamacare rates um, compared in states compared to uh, for people who actually still have health care benefits through work? In other words, if Obamacare is increasing by 20% here in Virginia, how much will everybody else's insurance be going up if you just have it through your employer? Very good question. And, you know, what we found is I think the following is why did employers offer benefits prior to the ACA? They offered benefits to attract and retain talent. And so now the ACA said, now you have to offer benefits, Mr. Employer. And so the employers are getting very creative. And so they don't, they can't sustain these increases like anybody else in the real world. And so what employers are doing to cut this increase is while we're seeing similar increases in the fully insured market, we're seeing a number of employers moving to self-insure that normally would have thought of this pre-ACA, pre-Obamacare to help curtail those cost increases in order to provide coverage. We still have over 140 million people that get their coverage through the employer-based plan system, and I wonder why we would want to destroy that. Why not we continue to form because it seems to be working pretty well because the employers do it as a benefit to attract retained talent. Yeah, I know a lot of companies have gone, including the one I happen to work for, have gone to a plan where they basically make a contribution to uh, to a, uh, a health insurance savings account, and then uh, you know it's up to you to try to figure out how you're going to pay for the rest of it. Exactly, very popular, growing, growing tremendously. And I think it's back to basics. You know, you don't buy car insurance to pay for gas. So what makes you think that we can buy health insurance to pay for the small things like toenail clippings? It doesn't make any sense. The insurance actual system doesn't work that way. You need catastrophic coverage, and so by getting a high health plan to cover the catastrophic, the heart attacks, the cancer, and then having a health savings account or a flexible spending arrangement for your employers makes a lot of sense to cover the routine maintenance. Um, and it, the other part that's driving the cost of care is the cost of care in terms of medical inflation, which is in large part of the inefficiency in our system due to the government payment system that we're running on top of. All right, and I'm guessing it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to get a lot worse. All right, William, thank you. William Short, health insurance expert, the CEO of Ameriflex, joining us. Here on News Radio 1140 WRBA.